Well, good morning, everybody. Oh, that was weak. <laughs> good morning, everybody. I'm excited to be here in the house of the Lord. I was telling the praise team earlier as we were practicing, I said, if you ain't sweating, you ain't doing it right. And so this morning, we're just going to go ahead and worship the Lord, give him everything. He gave it all for us, right? So we should come in here excited. We should be ready to go. And I'm not here for hype, but I'm here because I know that Jesus Christ died for me and I have life because of that. And it makes me excited. I don't know about you, but let's go ahead and stand and go to God in prayer. Father, we do come before you this morning and ask that you would bless our time together. God, we have gathered in this house for no other reason but to exalt your name, to lift you up, to learn from your word this morning. God, I pray for those who are joining by internet, for those who's joined in the house this morning. God, we don't, we don't want it to be about us, God. If we made it about us, then it, we would be sick and, and, and we would never make it anywhere. But God, we want it to be about you this morning, what you want done in this place. And Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I went to the enemy's camp And I took back what he stole from me Oh, I took back what he stole from me I took back what he stole from me Well, I went to the enemy's camp And I took back what he stole from me He's under my feet, he's under my feet Satan is under my feet. Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Oh, I took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Amen. What has the Lord done for you? <laughs> I think about what he's done. I mean, my goodness, my goodness, what has he done for us? I'm just thankful for his salvation, thankful for his peace, thankful for his joy. I'm just thankful for everything that he's done for me. And here's the thing. I know I've, I've talked about this before, but if he doesn't do anything else for me, he's done plenty enough. Not whenever he went to Calvary, I'm so thankful for that. 
do welcome the Holy Spirit here. We welcome you here, Jesus. Amen.
to sing that again because I don't know if we're feeling it this morning. I know I am. I'm saying, God, I need you. I don't know where to go from here. You know how many times the devil has gotten in and discouraged me and did this and did that and tried to derail me and make me give up and do all these things. I declare this morning that I need you, Lord. I can't walk. I can't do anything. I need you in my life. Jesus. God, I need you. Oh, I need you every hour. I need you, my one defense. You're my righteousness. Oh, God, yes. how I need you. Jesus, hallelujah, Lord, I We're not going to have the words to this next song probably up. The Lord just now laid it on my heart. It says, here's my heart, Lord. This is what the chorus says. It says, here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Jesus, I just pray that you would speak into our hearts this morning. Just speak to our hearts and let us know, Lord, what you would desire, what direction we should take next. Jesus. my heart, Lord, is my heart, Lord, is my heart, Lord, speak what is true, sing it again, 
Hallelujah. God is true. Hallelujah. Praise God. Speak what is true. We're going to go right into the Word. If you will, get your Bibles and turn with me to Acts chapter 4, verse 31. We're going to hear him speak what is true. His Word is truth, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 4. Verse 31, it's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Chapter 4, verse 31 says, 
And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. And when they had prayed, remember the behind the scenes things that have to take place first is you got to be praying. We got to be praying, right? Amen. When they prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. Can you imagine being in that place that day as they were there? This was not the day of Pentecost. This was another outpouring of the Spirit upon them. That they prayed and they prayed so earnestly that there was an earthquake that took place in that underneath the building there. That God brought that. That shook them. We need a shaking today, church. We need a holy shaking in our lives today. Not just something that, that shakes us and scares us, but we need, some, we need God to get hold of us and shake us sometimes. Amen? And get our attention and draw us back to him. And draw us into his presence and draw us to him. They were, the place was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. How many would like to see all being filled with the Holy Spirit today? Uh, some I don't see hands. I'm looking. I, I, I'm praying for boldness today, and that's what I'm going to speak about, and I'm going to probably be a little bold because I can feel it in my spirit right now. And as I'm looking out, how many would love to be full of the Holy Spirit today and outpouring in, his, in your life today? Praise God. I still looked, and I saw some hands not raised, but I pray before you leave this place that you will get a shaking that the Holy Ghost will shake every one of us and get us to the place that I need you, Lord. We sang that song, I need you, Lord. Oh, how I need you. We need him today. We need him in this 21st century that we're living in. We need him in the 2019. We need him as we're headed toward 2020. We're not the only ones that need him, but this world is in need of the Holy Ghost, in need of Jesus Christ, in need of a relationship with the Heavenly Father today. We need him. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. I want to speak today on bold actions. Praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your presence. God, I, I sense your presence right now, Lord. And, Lord, I pray, God, that every word I say will be what you speak into me to speak. Let me not be in myself. Let me not get in the flesh. But, Lord, let me speak what you say, Holy Spirit. Let me speak what you're sp saying to the church today. Lord, speak to us. Let the word of God speak to us today. And, Lord, let not only speak to us, but, Lord, let us be hearers of the word and doers of the word also, that we would receive everything that we need, Lord, in this time that we're living in. Lord, as we see things taking place around us, Lord, the church, we've got to be in action, and we've got to take some bold action. We've got to take some bold steps, and I pray, Lord, that you would help us to be bold. Give us holy boldness, Lord. God, give us the filling, the, the infilling of your spirit, Lord. We need that. We need it. Too many times we think we can just coast through. We don't need anything from you, God. We're all right. We got a good job. We got money in the bank. We got, we got things taken care of. We don't need you, Lord. How many times do we speak that with our actions? But, Lord, I want us, and I believe you're wanting us today, to let our actions turn to where we say we do need you and that we need you every second, every day, every hour of our lives for the rest of our lives and throughout eternity Lord we do need you I need you and we pray for that boldness to be given to us boldness to speak the word of God under the anointing of the Holy Spirit as in a result of prayers that are lifted up Lord help us to take action in Jesus name amen and amen praise God you can be seated we've been studying from the book of Acts over the last few weeks 
Pastor Jeff spoke last week, and I appreciate all the kind words and the anointed words that he had to speak to us last week about the Lord being the good shepherd. And uh, Melissa and I, and I know the pastoral staff, thank and appreciate everyone for your, your kindness and your love and, uh, and the gifts that you gave us, and we appreciate that. We're honored to serve, serve you, and we love you. But as we're looking at the book of Acts, action was motivated, and it needs to be motivated still today, by the power of the Holy Spirit in the lives, in our lives. When we look at the book of Acts, we're looking back at the early church at the very, very, very beginning when the church was given birth, and their sole dependence was upon the Spirit of God, the Word of God, their relationship with Jesus. They didn't have all these other books that they could read. They didn't have TV to watch. They didn't have the Internet. They had God and God alone. Our culture today, our time that we're living in, especially in our nation, we've got everything else, and we think sometimes we have need of nothing. Jesus gives a warning in the book of Revelations to the church. It's lukewarm who thinks that they're in need of nothing. He says that, hey, yes, you are. You're naked and you're blind and, and you need your eyes to be opened. And, and you need to be able to see that you do need me. Get out of your lukewarm status. Get out of the place of where you feel all comfortable about life and everything going on. Get to the place that you're on fire for me or get cold as ice. But get somewhere in the right place with me today. Now I believe he wants us to be on fire for him. And when we look at the early church, that's exactly what they were. They had Holy Ghost fire burning inside of them. They were on fire for God, and it could not be quenched. The devil tried everything he could to do it. Religious people tried to do it. But you know what? They kept on going, and they kept on going until death did they part this life, and they entered into that place of heaven where Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you will be. There you may be also. They were on fire. The fire burns out sometimes, though. We get too satisfied. We get too, we get too uh, uh, de self-dependent, self-reliant, government-dependent, government-reliant, all kinds of things that we're looking to to be our source of strength and our source of help when we need to be back like it was in the first church, the early church, where our dependence is upon God. There could come a day that our dependence could very well, everything that we've been depending upon could leave us quickly. Jobs could go away. Governments could go away. Foreign intrusion could take place. We could live where we can't go to McDonald's anymore. You can't go to Walmart and all these things. You don't have the Internet. You don't have anything. What will we do then? Oh, I don't know what I'll do then. I don't know what I'll do. I don't know what I'll do. Oh, I'll just have to die, won't I? Well, that's not what they did then. They didn't have any of those things. What they had was God. God's got to get back in first priority in our lives. God's got to have the preeminence in our lives again. And stop being so dependent and self-reliant upon things that we do and what we can make up and what the government does and everything else that the world has to offer. You see, they were dependent upon God, and when they were dependent upon God, they were highly effective in what they were doing. They were highly effective. They were not uh, uh, just, well, once in a while somebody got saved, and praise the Lord, oh, one person got saved in five years. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, it'll be ten more years before somebody else, and that'll be okay. I'm satisfied. Oh, we baptized somebody and they, 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 they got baptized and then they went and they never came back to church anymore. But we baptized them. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. It was such a joyful day. And that soul went astray. What's wrong with this church? I feel a holy boldness coming over me right now. You better hold on because God's got a word for us right now. Some of this stuff's not even in my, a lot of the things I've said so far are not in my notes. We built this building here to fill it up with people. And it's not full after a year. What's going on with us? What's going on with us? 
The church should be full. It should be overflowing. It should be a second service that we're starting now because the first one's so full that we can't hold them all. Curtains ought to be removed because we got chairs sitting waiting for even more people. What's wrong with us, church? Where's our boldness for this day and this hour that we live in? Where is our enthusiasm? Where's our excitement? Where's our zeal? Where's our hope? What are we depending upon? Who are we looking to? What are we looking for? Oh, if the preacher will only preach so long and I get out at a certain time, I'll be happy with my church. I'll be happy with my pastor. Oh, it'll be a wonderful church, and I'll invite everybody I can because I can depend. He's done at 12. Oh, we're trying to do that. But listen, I'm telling you what, if the Lord's speaking and the Holy Ghost is moving and we preach 24 hours a day, so be it. If everybody leaves, then I'll preach to myself. But God is still God, and God's got to be the first priority in our lives. Hallelujah. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Give me boldness today. Give me boldness to speak your word and to speak the truth in love. God, not out of anger, not out of anything, but, Lord, out of love. God, let every word be spoken. Let every heart receive today the word of God. Lord, I pray unto you, Lord, for boldness for, for all of us. I pray for an infilling of the Spirit today. Lord, I pray, God, for you to pour out your Spirit upon us and let us get to the place that we hunger and we thirst after you. Oh, Jesus, we need you, Lord. We need you in our lives. Every second, every day, every hour of our lives, we need you. Lord, help us to turn completely to you, Lord. Help us to t put aside the things that we hold on to so many times and help us to be bold. Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I just, I don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I, I'm just going to obey God. I may stop in the middle and pray again. I don't know. But I'm telling you what, God's wanting to do something in this place. God's wanting to do something in this church. A couple of weekends ago, last Friday, a week ago, the sister was here and she said that she woke up in the middle of the night as she was preparing for here and the Lord was speaking to her and she, wanted, she had to share this with us. The Lord's taking you somewhere. When she said that, I was back here, I was working on the, the, the video camera. It clicked in my spirit. Because I believe God is taking us somewhere, but he's wanted to have some people go with him. He's wanting some people to say, I'll go with you, Lord. I'm going to take you somewhere, but you need to go with him, don't we? We need to take a step. We don't need to just sit. We need to take steps. We need to move forward. We need to take bold actions as the body of Christ. The word boldness means confidence, it means courage, it means fearless. And we have to be careful to understand that there's a difference between holy boldness and just our personality of being boldness. Our personality can be loud and boastful and proud and opinionated and rude and brash and, and in a sense that's being bold, but that's not holy boldness. That's a loud mouth. That's somebody that really people just don't like to be around too much. But holy boldness is something that even the most meek and quiet person can have. It's an unction of the Holy Ghost that moves in a person's life. That all of a sudden they obey the Lord and they start speaking forth the Word of God with confidence in whom they know as their Lord and Savior. They get up out of their place of complacency if that's where they've been and the Holy Spirit moves on them and starts speaking through them and they stand and they start declaring the goodness of the Lord. They start declaring how God's been so good. Look what the Lord has done in my life. Look what the Lord has done for me, how he's changed me and he'll do the same for you. A timid little person that all of a sudden the power of the Holy Ghost moves inside of them and they rise up with boldness to be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ 
to this world and to their loved ones and to their family and to this generation. We're in need of that holy boldness to rise up inside of us. It's not something that we bring on ourselves, but it's by the power of the Holy Spirit working inside of us. And we need this kind of boldness to take bold actions for today. Boldness that shakes us gives us so much power from God that we are fully confident and on fire for him. Now these are bold actions that the early church were taking and they were continually, continuously seeing things happen. What did they see happen as they took bold actions? They saw souls saved every day. They saw times where multitudes of people were saved. They saw people being filled with the Spirit they saw them not only being filled with the Spirit, but they saw signs and wonders. They saw healings taking place. They were outside the church. They were outside the synagogue. They were outside their upper room. They were outside their house. They were outside. They were doing these things. And lives were being changed by Jesus Christ operating through those bold actions that they were taking. It was all right. It was good. It was good. It was good. The world population has increased, oh, I don't know how much since the early day, since the early church. Over 7 billion people today in the world. 17,000 some just here in the city of Bristol, Virginia. 26,000, I think, in the city of Bristol, Tennessee. So 40-some thousand right here in Bristol, just in city limits that live here. You go outside the neighboring area and you go into the Tri-Cities area and the population of the Tri-Cities is nearly is a half a million people. 500,000 people right at that in population in the counties and the cities that are right here in our region where we live. How many are in church today? I, I could tell you there, there are church buildings all over the place. Our churches gather. You can pass up 12 churches coming here if you come from exit 7. I'm exaggerating, but it's almost. And you go the other road and you go from that direction and you pass 20, depending on where you live, and every one of them probably have room for some more people. Now, how many churches, if we pass so many churches, how many houses do we pass of people that are not in church, that don't have that relationship with the Lord? There's enough churches, I would say, to be able to fill every person that wants to serve God and every one of them be full. I, I was at a pastor's meeting, it's been a while back, a long time ago, here in the, here in the city. And there was a lady that she was a minister, she was on staff with a church, but she'd come from another area and she'd said that uh, she had heard that, you know, the, being a church or a godly city, a, a church that's a, a united city for the cause of Christ, is, is, it's not by seeing all these different churches, little churches all over the place. That's usually a sign that there's division. Somebody got mad at somebody else, so they went and started another church. How many have you, have, how many have you ever heard that or even been a part of that, possibly? Somebody got mad, they packed up their stuff. Okay, we're going to go start our own thing over here. And, and, and then this church starts, and this one over here, and they're birthed out of bad things. What if we all came together as one, as the early church did? What if we all came together as one and united together as the church? I don't care if you're Baptist or you're Methodist or you're whatever, you're Presbyterian or you're Church of God or you're Assembly of God. What if we are Highlands Fellowship, non-denomination? I don't care what it is. If we're all born again and we're loving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, it doesn't matter what the shingle is over the door. It's a matter that we're the church. And what if the church would come together and unite? We could turn this city upside down and see souls saved. We need some boldness because we're too scared sometimes. We lack the confidence. We lack the courage. We're fearful. Bold actions result in things that God really wants to happen. And we may think, well, today is a different time than it was then. And it is, obviously. It's different today than it was then. 
you know, they didn't have a building like this. They didn't have flashing lights. They didn't have video screens. They didn't have all these instruments and electric. They didn't have electricity. They didn't have padded pews to sit in. They didn't have air conditioning and heat. They didn't have all these things that we enjoy today. They didn't have those things. That's right. It, it was different. They didn't have internet where you could connect with anybody in the world by, by just talking to them on Facebook or some social media outlet. They didn't have an outreach to where they could take the, the message and thank God for what we're doing today of, of live streaming and going out to different places for whosoever wants to watch can watch. They didn't have that. So it is different. But there are some things that are, haven't changed. Jesus is still Jesus. The Holy Ghost is still the Holy Ghost. God the Father is still God the Father. And the devil is still the devil. And the devil is still trying to do his thing and come against the church and come against God's people. And the church is still fighting against the devil. And the church is still trying to reach out to the lost in this time, but are we being as effective today in our culture as what they were in the early church? See, 2,000 years later, none of those who we read about are still living on planet Earth. Oh, yes, some of them are still living, but they're living in heaven now. Well, I guess, I, I mean, I'm not their judge, but I would think that all that we're reading about here in the book of Acts that we're doing these things for the Lord are all live up in heaven. They're waiting for us. What a reunion that'll be one of these days when we could talk to them. Say, what was it like that day on the day of Pentecost? What was it like to see 3,000 souls and then 5,000 souls and then seeing all these things? And what was it like? Wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to say, you know, in the year 2019, 2020, in that time frame, we saw another outpouring. And we witnessed and experienced the same thing that you experienced 2,000 years ago. It was a different day, yes, but it's still the same God. It was a different time, yes, but it's still the same Jesus. It's a different day today, but it's still the same Holy Ghost. We're still combating against the same devil, but greater is he still today than he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in you today. And so we've got to continue to take bold actions. They took bold actions. They didn't just sit by and say, well, Lord, do it if you can. Lord, I'll just show up at church, and if, if something happens, it happens with no prayer, no, no, no intercession, no, t no inviting anybody to come, no, no going out during the week and ministering to different ones, no, no just coming in and let me, oh, God, if you can move me, move me, and if not, then I'll move out and I'll go, I'll be back next Sunday. And I may show up, and I, I'm going to be bold right now. We start at 1030 now, but it seems like we have a lot of stragglers. See, it used to be we had people leaving before church was over. Now we have people not showing up when church starts. I don't know how to fix that, people, other than saying this is when church starts and we'll try to end it at a certain time. But when we start, we start. And when God's finished, he's finished. If it's 1130 and we're finished, we're finished. If it's 1230, we're finished. Whatever it is, God have your way in our lives. God have your way in our lives. We need God in our lives. We need the boldness and we need to start taking bold actions for the Lord again. Hallelujah. As I said, we're still dealing with the same adversary that they were. The devil has blinded people today as he did then. There's a religious mindset still at work in the world today. In the church today, there's religious people. There's selfishness and greed that's in our culture. There's a spirit of antichrist that's at work, wanting Jesus taken out of everything. We're living in a culture that's becoming more and more less Christian. We're a, a lot of ways Christian in name only. 
we're a Christian nation are we I think that the church now is the minority in our nation instead of the majority that it used to be see where deception is rampant in today's time people are thinking that they're okay when they're not okay and, and I'm nobody's judge but I but you can tell the fruit you can be a fruit inspector by the fruit that we bear some of the fruit is not the kind of fruit that's the fruit of the spirit it's some fruit that's some rotten fruit sometimes and some people profess and say but they're not living it we're not living it we're Christian in name only I think that's breaking the first commandment not to take the Lord thy God's name in vain that's not just saying God in and using his name in vain but it's saying I am God's child and using it in vain I believe that we're identifying ourselves with the Lord and that we're his and we're hypocrites because we act so, so different at other places we act this way at church we're all pious and holy and religious when we're a bunch around a bunch of other Christian people but then we go out and we act like everybody else doesn't work that way that doesn't turn a world upside down for Jesus that that just conforms to the rest of the world see the church is the blood-bought church it's a glorious church and it's the powerful church and we can either continue to let this go on and do nothing as an action or we can be like the first century church and take bold actions there's a word that maybe you've heard before if you haven't I'll introduce it to you it's called counterculture counterculture is a way of life a set of attitudes opposed or at variance with the prevailing social norm so in other words it's acting like not everybody else is acting like here's the norm of, of society and the culture everybody else is doing this and it says it's okay and counterculture is where that you don't do that you actually stand against that and you no longer are participating with it and the church has got to be counterculture in the culture that we're living in the early church was counterculture there was religion there was Herod there was Pilate there was Caesar there were Roman Empire there were all these things that they were influenced by in that time there was the religion and the religiosity of the day there was uh, Greek thinking there were all kinds of thoughts and and ideas of the culture of that day that they lived in and we're no different today than they were then see our culture today is trying to normalize sinful actions and call them okay and that it's normal to say that it's oh to that it's a woman's right to do with her child and abort that child that's normal that should be part of the culture that should be accepted that should be the right way and everybody ought to accept it and that should be the norm and let's move on our culture today is trying to normalize sinful actions and call that the new normal it's okay to have sexual relationships with anyone you want you should be able to love whoever you want to love and that should be normal if you want to change your gender or your gender identity if you want to identify yourself as a he or a it or she or whatever it's okay that's the norm you should be able to do whatever you want to do however you think that your life is and who you are greed and materialism are still tempting us to get everything we want and feed our pride we deserve the best mentality the Bible is not the true Word of God it's it's got errors in it it's in I mean, it's got some it's got some faults in it it was written by people it, it, this was fiction over here oh that in the garden that didn't really happen uh, you know a serpent talking violence is the daily news bullying in the schools is going on way too much drug addictions and opioid addictions and stuff like that are out of control in our culture sad thing is it's not only outside the church but it's inside the church too that's a sad thing about it because some churches are becoming apostate and turning away from sound doctrine and conforming to the culture 
of our days. There are preachers, there are priests, or whatever you want to call them, that are saying that what the culture is saying is okay, and you're all right if you do these things, just live your life, however, and blend in with the culture. But I need to be a little bold here. We need a holy church that is counter-cultural. Amen? We need to be a holy church that is counter-cultural. We need to be the church that Jesus bled and died for, that he saved us and redeemed us. He bought us. We're his. We need to be taking bold actions to win this lost generation before it's too late. Remember, the generation that started in the early church, they're not here anymore. We're only here for a period of time, and the other people that are here with us during this time are only here for this time also. We need to be bold today because we may not have tomorrow. This generation is passing. I'm getting older every second, so are you. And our mortality gets more and more real the older we get to realize this body is going to pass. And then what? Because there is a then what? Oh, well, if I just coast through and, and then when I get real sick and I know I'm about to die, I'm talking about a Christian here, somebody that's been born again. Somebody that just goes through the motions, never takes action, never does anything, but then knows that they're dying and then takes, oh God, and then does these actions that that is not the plan that God has for us as believers. The plan that God has for us as believers is that every day of our lives we're bold in our actions, that we're aggressively fighting the good fight of faith and that we're trying to win everyone that we can to the Lord before it's too late. Now I thank God that God reaches people at every age of life. Whatever that age may be, he can do it. But as believers, we have to be steadfast. We've got to be unmovable. And we've got to keep pressing on and keep abounding in the work of the Lord every single day of our lives and continue to take bold action. Not sit back and let somebody else do it or, or the church over there over the, across the street or up the road. Let them do it and we'll be okay right here. Just taking care of day to day. Come to Sunday, go through the motions, go home, eat lunch, take a nap. See you next Sunday. May see you Wednesday, maybe. Maybe, doubt it, maybe. We need to be the church that's not sitting back and letting the world keep going in the wrong direction. If, a, if the salt has lost its savor, what good is the salt? Jesus said, we're the salt of the world. If we've lost our influence, then we're no good. We might as well be put in the street and run over by a vehicle. Use it for, for maybe, maybe for ice. No, not even for ice. It's not even good for that. What good are we if we've lost our zeal? We've lost our enthusiasm. What, what good are we if we've lost our boldness? if we're running on empty spiritually when we should be full and continuing to be full of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need, we need to be and we must be bold in our culture just like they were. When I say just like they were, I mean that they took really bold actions to impact the culture of the day. They didn't stay in the upper room. They didn't lock themselves behind the doors afraid. They did at first, but they didn't long term of what the culture was going to act and what they were going to do. They took bold actions that they were emboldened by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus spoke to the disciples before he was crucified about the Holy Spirit and what he was going to do. Turn with me over to John chapter 15. See, this is what we will run into. John 15, 
Verse 26 says, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me, and you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. These things have I spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Listen, these are the things he was talking to his disciples. This is what's going to happen when I'm gone. The Holy Spirit's going to come, but you're going to go through some things. You're going to be put out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you, what? Kills you, kills you, will think that he offers God's service, and these things will they do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go away to, you, to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away. For if I go not away, the helper or the comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sins. Listen, he will convict the world. He will bring conviction. Conviction. Conviction is where the Holy Spirit says, uh, pull over, please. You're under arrest. You are breaking the law. You're sinning. You're doing this, and that's not right. And you need to make it right with God. Here's Jesus, your attorney. And he's going to plead your case before the judge. That's what the Holy Spirit, that's how the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit work in this plan of salvation. But the Holy Spirit brings us to the place of conviction. He comes to us and he arrests us and says, you're under arrest. You're breaking the law. You're transcending, uh, transgressing against God. And you know what? Nearly all of us, probably the majority, probably all of us, I will say, don't like to be told we're doing something wrong. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He convicts us. He convicts us of sin. He convicts us of righteousness and of judgment of sin. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. So the Holy Spirit comes and he brings conviction. And he comes to the place to convict the world of sin and righteous living and then to bring judgment upon those things. So he's come from heaven and he's working in us and is going to make the culture upset. It's going to make the, church, or the culture upset. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He upsets our apple cart. What we think is okay and feels good and all that, all of a sudden we become aware that it's not. And he doesn't stop when we become a Christian. He still convicts us even while we're Christians. That conviction that he comes, the Holy Spirit, because we can get out of line, we can get out of the wrong, we can go the wrong way, we can, we can make a wrong decision, we can still do things that we shouldn't be doing, and the Holy Spirit is faithful and he comes by and says, hey, you need to repent. That wasn't right. But we can huff and puff and we can put our arms and fold our arms and we pout and we can do all these things and say the Holy Spirit, oh, well, I want to keep doing this and I want to keep doing that and, and so on and so on and so on. But the Holy Spirit is saying, no, you can't keep doing that. You can't keep sitting in the church and never going and doing any ministry. You can't do that. See, conviction, the Holy Spirit is going to convict us of sin, of what we're doing wrong, but it also convicts us of righteousness, of what we're doing and we need to be doing right. And if we're not doing what's right, then he'll convict us of that. And then judgment. See, if, if, if the church, listen, go back to what the early church did. They prayed first. The Holy Spirit filled them second. Then they went and they spoke the word of God with boldness and souls were saved. Call it a formula if you want, but it's what worked. It's what worked. And the church grew. When I look around, I see our church not growing. Somewhere we're missing something. We're either not praying. We're not being full of the Spirit. We're not going and speaking the word with boldness. One of those three things or all three of those things. Because souls would be getting saved. 
souls will be getting saved. There'll be more people in here, there'll be more baptisms. There'll be people, there'll be people seeking God. They'd be in the altars here, they'd be praying, they'd be crying. It was one of the songs I heard that we were singing this morning about, and I don't remember what the words were, but it was about uh, sinners, I guess, or people coming to the Lord and, and I guess them changing them. And, and it stirred in my spirit. And I'm thinking, how long has it been since we really have seen people in this altar here? Now, I'm talking in this one here. Over in the other building, people would come to the altar more. Over here, I don't know if you're afraid. I don't understand why we don't come to the altar anymore. I don't understand why we think that we're okay. We don't need to connect now with God, but through prayer and respond to the Word of God. I need to go fellowship. I need to go do all the other things that I'm so busy at in life in the day that I don't need to take some time now in the house of God to pray and to receive whatever it is I need for this week. What's wrong what's wrong with us something's missing church something's missing prayer being full of the Holy Spirit going out and speaking the word in boldness going out and ministering to others there's some things missing at adoration church I don't know what's missing down the other road I'm not in that church but as a pastor of this church I'm telling you there's some things that are missing And yeah, the whole world is hearing it. The whole world's hearing it about us right now. We could turn it off and say, well, you know, turn off the video. We just want to keep this inside. We don't want to tell all of our faults and our failures. We, we, we want to look good to everybody. We want to look like we're, we're the best. We want to look so pretty and we want to look, we, got to want to, we want to have the flashiest, all this. We want to do all these things and look so great to everybody else. But listen, it doesn't matter what kind of Pig, uh, lipstick you put on a pig now I'm not saying you don't do things to do things right and do it with excellence I'm not discounting anything it's good but let me tell you something if we've missed the essentials we've missed it all if we're missing on prayer, we're missing it. If we're missing on being full of the Holy Spirit, we're missing it. If we're missing on going and sharing the good news with somebody else, we're missing it, church. Got to make a decision. We got to make a decision because there's going to be two outcomes as a result of, of bold actions. People are going to get angry at us. Some of you may be angry at me right now. I love you. I don't care, though. I love you anyway. Get mad at me. Get mad at God's Word. It's what God, I'm, I'm preaching the Word of God. Take it up with Him. You go outside and you're going to talk to some people and they will get mad at you because you talk to them about Jesus. You post something on Facebook and you're going to get sometimes some people scowling back at you and telling you all kinds of things. Unless you preach to the choir. If you're preaching to the choir, amen, oh, hallelujah, oh, that's wonderful. You know, and that's good. It's all right. We need to encourage one another. When was the last time we put a bold statement or made a bold statement in, in, the, in the public about our faith? When was the last time that we got, made a bold statement to that coworker that we work with about Jesus Christ and him saving us and him being the son of God? When was the last time? Well, you can't do that at the workplace. I think we still live in a nation where we're free. And even if we weren't free, we still serve a God that's still the God of all things. Amen. Who has all power and authority. He'll take care of us. But we've got to make a decision. Will we be bold and take bold action, empowered by the Holy Spirit, or will we blend with the culture today out of fear or rejection? See, we've got, and we would, if we would pray, 
If we would pray just like they prayed, that we would receive boldness in the 21st century to be the real, genuine church that's not ashamed or afraid or intimidated by the devil and all of his demons, but that we would go and proclaim Jesus Christ under, under the anointing of the power of the Holy Spirit, I believe, I know some things would change. I know some things would change. I know because I know God is faithful to his word and he's faithful to his people. I know he'll do that. Billions of people in the world that needs to see the church take bold action. Thousands in our city that needs to see us take action. Some of the bold actions they took, what were they? In Acts chapter 4, verse 32 through 37, if you read through there, you'll see that they all of a sudden, they were of one heart and one soul, the multitude of them. Neither did anyone say that any of the things that possessed he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. This is one of the bold actions that they took as they got united together and they used their material goods of what they had been blessed with to take care of one another. Do you know that if the church would be the church as it's supposed to be, there would be no welfare, there would be no Medicare, there would be no Social Security, there would be, no, uh, uh, there would be none of the things that all the government is providing because the church would be doing its job. And so what's happened is there's an unhealthy reliance upon the government for everything now. Oh, the government, oh, i got to vote for this crook over here so I can keep my money coming to me. What if the church was the church and we took some bold actions? And listen, what if people, what if we as the church really gave like we should? I appreciate all the action, all the, all the fundraising that's going on. I appreciate all that. I appreciate all the work that's going into that. But if every person in here would tithe and give like they're supposed to, we wouldn't have to do fundraisers like that. You know what we could do with our time, with those time, that time that we have? We could be going out and reaching out to somebody that's lost. I told you I prayed for boldness. I asked Linda to help me pray for boldness yesterday. Thank you, sister. See, there's no, there's no greediness. There was no stinginess in them. There was no lack of generosity in them. They gave every one of them. Out of the, everybody, you need a car? Here, here's the keys. Go drive my car. You need a place to stay? Okay, I got an extra room. You need some food? Sure. You need, you know, when I was growing up, we'd go over to the neighbor sometimes. We'd run out of flour or sugar. Can I get a cup of sugar, a cup of flour? Sure, you can get it. And then they'd call later and they'd maybe they needed milk or whatever. And you, you did those kinds of things. Now we don't even talk to our neighbors hardly. We don't even know our neighbors. And our neighbors is part of our harvest. Lord, help us. But what if we all united together and used the things that God's blessed us with to be able to take care? That would be a bold action, would it not? That would be bold. Let me tell you something else they did that was bold. This is really bold. Oh, this one's bold. Acts chapter 5, where Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession, and they kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and they brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Well, it doesn't sound that bad. You know, they, they sold a piece of land, and they brought a piece, part of the money or whatever it was to the church, and, 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 and it was, there's nothing wrong with that. What was wrong was this. They said they were going to give all of it, and they withheld and held some back. Do you know what happened? Do you know what bold action Peter took? It was judgment in the house of God. Judgment for sin started in the house of God to keep the church holy. They held them accountable for what they said. He only asked the question, what did you do with it? And an ice, why has Satan filled your heart to lie? Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? See, the Holy Spirit was at work here of bringing conviction and bringing judgment. While it remained, was it not your own? After, after it was sold, was it not your own in, in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have lied to men, not to men, but to God. 
many times, Lord, help us? Have we lied to God? How many times have we said, Lord, I'm going to start doing this, and we never started? How many times have we, have we said, Lord, I promise I'm going to do this, and we never did it? We lied to God and God's judgment. hasn't been extended yet see God was keeping his church holy see if the church is going to have an influence it's got to be different than the rest of the culture it's got to remain holy and as church sin's got to be sin it can't be winked at oh well this all it's okay for you because you're a nice person oh well over here well no it's not all right for you and you're going to hell Oh, and, and, and this and this and this and, and, and not addressing the sins. When there are sins in the camp, the sins have to be addressed. Lose battles when sin's in the camp. The enemy wins when sin's in the camp. If statistics are right, there's probably people in here addicted to pornography. If statistics are right, then somebody's probably cheating on their spouse. I'm not talking about outside the church. I'm talking about inside the church. If statistics are correct, there's probably gossip that goes on quite a bit. How many things go on inside the church that we never say it's sin? How many times do we never take bold action against sinful things? God took bold action. Peter obeyed the Lord. The Holy Spirit killed Ananias. What? He dropped dead. He dropped dead right there. Guys, come carry him out and bury him, please. Three hours later, Sapphira shows up. Sapphira... Sapphira has the same story. See, they plotted with one another. She lied too. Peter's like, uh, the same people that carried him out is going to carry you out. She fell dead. Do you know what happened as a result? Great fear came upon the church and upon all the people outside. Why? Because they realized there's something different about the church than the rest of the world. There's something holy about the church that's different than the rest of the world. And if the church has lost its holiness, how can we be different and how can we be effective in the generation that we live in today? How can we call sin okay? How can we, how can we do things that we say it's all right when it's not all right? How can we wink at things? How can we no longer blush at things? How can we do these things and say it's okay and still think that we're going to be effective to this world out here when we have conformed to the world? It's time to take bold actions. And we've got to be held accountable as Christians for sin. What else did they do? They went out. Acts chapter 5, verses 12 through 16 tells us they went out. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. They were outside that, that synagogue. They were outside their dwelling place. They were outside, and they were doing things that even when, when Peter walked by, some, were, some had the, uh, the uh, um, uh, superstitious notion because they thought of uh, if you went past the shadow of somebody I was reading on this and about the shadow of somebody that there, there was a magical thing that could happen in the person's shadow so if I can get in Peter's shadow I could be healed well it was not Peter that was generating that power it was the power of the Holy Ghost in Peter and so there's a world out here that doesn't know anything about the Spirit of God. They don't know anything, but they can realize, hey, if I could just get what they've got, if I could get in their shadow, so to speak, it may be that they're thinking uh, some kind of Hindu thought. They may be thinking some New Ageism thought. They may be thinking whatever. But when they have an encounter with the real God from a real church that's going out to the real people in the real place where they are, they'll realize this was not Peter, but this is the Lord God Almighty who's done this in my life who saved me and changed me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What if we were bold enough to go outside? Bold enough to go outside. 
bold enough to go to our neighbors, bold enough to go to the workplace, bold enough to go to Walmart, go, bold enough to go down State Street, bold enough to go uh, neighbor to neighbor in the, in the community and tell them, I'm not coming here for anything but to tell you that Jesus loves you. Well, we took that bold action. Well, they'll slam the door in my face. That's right, some will, absolutely. They sure will. But there may be some that will say, tell me a little bit more. I want to hear about this, Jesus, because I'm, I'm struggling right now, and I need to know. And, and, and then we start talking, the Holy Spirit's in the mix there, and then conviction comes, and then they're introduced to Jesus, and then they get saved and born again. Oh, but they need to come in the church and get saved. Pastor, you need to preach them until they get saved. Listen, I'm the pastor. I'm not the evangelist. I have to do the work of the evangelist, but there are evangelists in this, in this congregation. There are people who could rise up and go out and witness to people more. They went to jail again for ministering in the streets. They were using the name of Jesus, and they had been, they had been commanded, don't you use the name of Jesus, because they encountered the culture that was antichrist. We live in a culture right now that's becoming more and more antichrist. More and more. More and more. Don't, Jesus is a joke. Jesus, they'll make fun of him. They'll use his name in vain. The church is a joke. Everything's a joke. What, what if the church would take bold action and people would realize the church is not a joke, but the church is the body of Christ and Jesus Christ is who he says he is? And take action. They're put in jail, but you know what? I said this earlier, and this right here backs it up. I said, well, what if they, what if, what if, what if uh, they, they, they get mad at you? What if they do this? Or what if, what if you do end up in jail or whatever? Do you know what happened when they were in the jail? God sent an angel down, opened the doors, and let them out. Now, they haven't sung here yet. This is another time. And this was before they were praying at Rhoda's house. This was one time where they just got in there, and the Lord sent an angel, said, open the gate up there. They walked on out. When they, when they heard that they were out, the religious leaders, and they heard that they were out, they were, on, they were all upset, bent out of shape. Who let them go? What, what's going on here? And Peter, Peter appears before them, and it says, verse 25, 29, but Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Who do we have confidence in? See, when we're looking at boldness, it's a matter of having confidence in someone or something. If you have confidence in your material goods, then that's where your boldness is going to come from. That's where you'll stick your chest out a little bit and say, hey, well, I got this and I got that. If you have your confidence in, 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 uh, uh, um, in position or you have your confidence in uh, whatever it is, if you have your confidence in those things, that's where you're going to be the most bold in. So if you have your confidence in God, then that's where you're going to be the most bold in. God will take care of me. God will watch out for me. If I say this or I do this, God's going to take care of this. If I give this to somebody, God will take care of my needs. God will do it. God will do it. God will do it because that's where I've got my confidence and I ought to obey God rather than men. And they got mad at this. They wanted to kill him. Gamaliel, who was one on the, on the council, stood up, though, and, and said, you know, basically let it run its course. If they're real, they're real. If not, then it'll flop. And defended him. That was pretty much basically what, what it is. And you can read in Acts chapter 5, uh, starting with verse 33. You can go down through there and you can see what he said. Let me, let me share two other things, two other bold actions that I think that, that we've got to take as the church. One is in chapter 6 where they were bold enough 
to trust others to do ministry for them. See, there was a dispute that came up in the church. Well, the widows are not being taken care of. The orphans are not being taken care of. There's nobody to feed them and all this kind of stuff. So Peter, the apostles, appointed deacons full of the Holy Ghost, prayed for them, for them to go do the business work of the church while they attended to praying and reading the Word, studying the Word of God. You know what happened as a result of that? Even more souls got saved. See, if we, we, it goes two ways. As a pastor, I've got to entrust people with responsibilities. But also as a pastor, I've got to have trustworthy people to entrust them to. What does that mean, pastor? What are you saying? If I give you a responsibility, it's your responsibility. It doesn't come back to me to finish it or one of the other pastors. It's a matter of you finishing it and get it through. And it's done. But that doesn't always happen. The bold action starts, but then it ends, and it ends up back with a pastor to finish it because they didn't finish it or it was not halfway done. I'm telling you, I love you, but this is truth. So it's hard to entrust things to people who don't find them or don't become or don't act trustworthy. Wouldn't it be bold in our action to say, hey, you can count on me and I'll do this and I'll see it through till it's done and I won't have to ask you a question. It'll be done. Going out, feeding people, going out, witnessing, Got to have the pastor with us. Got to have the pastors or somebody. No, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, well, I thought I did. No, you got to have boldness and confidence in the one that you serve that he is with you. Be full of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with you, just as he was with these deacons here. And verse number says this then the word of God spread and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith they were even able to reach the priests that were causing troubles would it be bold for us to just say count me in I'll do my part that'd be a bold action for the church to take amen I, 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 there ought to be a greater amen out of that. That's a bold action that you all could take as the church. Because God can use you. And God will use you. You know people I don't know. You can go to places I can't go and others can't go. But God will go with you. God will go with you. God will go with you. The last one was one of those deacons was so bold that that conviction, the high priest said, are these things so? He, he was talking to him. Stephen, he was accused of blasphemy. Stephen starts preaching. And if you want to read an account of the Old Testament in a summarized portion, you read chapter 7 of the book of Acts. You've got the whole shebang right there in that one chapter of what the real truth and what the real meaning of the Old Testament is and how it ties to the New Testament. But he was talking to a bunch of Jewish people. And he's sharing with them, and do you know what? Conviction came. Conviction came, and it cut, solved their hearts. Now, their response could have been, Oh, Lord, forgive us, forgive us, forgive us. Stephen, you are a blessed person. You have shared with us the word of God. You have brought the word of God to us. And do you know what they did? They did not do that. They gathered him. They took him out. And they picked up stones. And they started throwing them at him. But you know who was with Stephen? Jesus and the Holy Ghost and God the Father because as Stephen looked up he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God and he, and he said the same thing that Jesus he was the first martyr for Christ but he said the same thing that Jesus did when he was on the cross Father forgive them for they don't know what they're doing be bold enough to die for Jesus <laughs> it 
it would be even if we're not even bold enough to tell somebody or even say the name Jesus in front of people I kindly highly doubt it that any would be bold enough to die for him but if we're bold enough and we're confident in the one that we serve because that ought to give us confidence that even if we stand for the Lord and there are those who oppose us and even want to kill us and do kill us, the one we serve, the one we're being bold for, he's right there still with us. See, that boldness, that boldness, that courage, that confidence is not in ourselves. It's not in what we have. It's not in the material things. It's not in our culture. It's not in all those things. It's only in the Lord. It's only in the Lord. Lord, I need you. Will you come, Nathan? We're going to sing that song. But when we sing it, I, I, we're going to pray for boldness too. Because I, I, I really believe God wants to embolden us. We need to have more boldness and to take bold actions in this last day that we're living in. Jesus is coming back, and he's coming back soon, soon, soon. And we better be busy about the Father's business, taking every bold step that we can, every bold action that we can, confident in whom we serve. Amen. 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 Stand with me, if you will, please. Heavenly Father, we do need you. Lord, I thank you for giving me boldness. But Lord, also, I thank you for each person that's here and for their love for you. God, sometimes, and I don't have to tell you this, you tell us, correction starts in the house of God. Judgment starts here. Conviction has to be in the house of God. If it's not, then what's the purpose? Holy Spirit, I pray for holy conviction in this house. Not as a matter of, of me, but a matter of you, Lord, speaking in our lives, calling us to go and to do bold actions for you, Lord. Taking a step of faith, having more confidence, getting rid of fear and doubt, being full of the Holy Ghost and fire not dwelling on yesteryear's experience, but knowing that today I need a fresh touch from you, Lord. As I was reading, boldness is not a spiritual gift. It's something you got to pray for. And you got to pray again for it, and again for it, and again for it. Lord, help us to have the holy boldness about us. Help us to be holy in our, in our mannerism of life and righteous. Help us to not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Lord, help us to be the church, the blood-bought church that has holy blood running through it, has holy blood poured out upon it, blood without sin, without spot, without blemish of the perfect Lamb of God, that we've been set apart, sanctified, made a holy church for you, Lord. God, let us hold, return to a holy way of living. Lord, let us be set on fire for you. Let us get in our prayer closets and pray and intercede. Lord, let us go out into the highways and hedges and compel the lost to come in. Lord, we got a work to do. Lord, there's so much to do, so much to do, so much to do, so many things to take place. Lord, that none of us can sit back and say we're done. None of us can say I've retired. I don't have anything else to do. Lord, every one of us has something to do. Help us, Jesus, to fulfill the calling that you have in our lives until we leave this life. Give us holy boldness. Will you pray with me, church? Lord, give me. Oh, that's, that, that wasn't even bold. Lord, will you give me boldness? Holy boldness. Holy boldness. Boldness that shakes the very foundation that I'm standing on. 
shakes the very core of my being, shakes my soul up, wakes me up, quickens me in my spirit, draws me nearer to you, Lord. Shake us up, oh God. Help us to draw nearer to you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Save the lost, Lord. Save our loved ones, God. Help us to be your ambassador going out to this lost and dying world. Help us to put our focus upon you above everything else, Jesus, and rely completely upon you for our lives, Lord. God, help me to more so rely upon you. More so, more so, more so. Will you come today? The altar is open. There's plenty of room. There's plenty of room. If you want to kneel here, if you want to sit, if you want to stand, there's plenty of room. Will you come to the altar and let the Lord just spend some time with the Lord today. Let holy boldness be refilled with the Holy Spirit. Let an encounter take place right now with the Holy One, uh, the Holy One of Israel, the Holy God.
give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Will you stand to your feet? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Remember prayer. Remember to pray every day. Remember to share the word of God every day. Remember to be filled every day. Ask the Lord for an infilling every single day of our lives. We need more and more of him every day, especially in the time that we're living. Go be a witness of him. Go share. Be bold. Be courageous. Not in yourself, but in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm believing and I'm expecting that God is taking us somewhere. And he's taking us to a better place. He's taking us to places where we've never been before as a church. He's taking us to a higher plane that we've never seen. He's taking us to places, I believe, where souls will be saved. And it will be a reoccurring event. It will be outpourings of the Spirit. It will be those things. I see that. I believe it. I believe it today. God, give us the boldness to press through. Lord, press through the complacency. Press through the places of comfort. Press through the discouragement. Press through whatever it is that would stand in the way. Every giant that would stand against us. We come against it right now in the name of the Lord. The battle is not ours, but it belongs to you, God, and we come against it in the name of the Lord, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, defeat our enemies, defeat every giant that would stand before us, that would try to strike fear in our hearts and take away our courage and our boldness, God, help us and sustain us and give us strength, Lord, I'm believing for wonderful things and great things, for your glory and your honor, in the name of Jesus, amen. And amen, and amen, and amen. Remember, next Sunday, uh, we'll be having Family Fall Festival from 4 to 6. Go invite somebody. Come be with you. Invite them to come to church in the morning. Go to lunch. Come back and have a wonderful time as families. Amen. God bless you all. we got footballs that are for sale, fundraisers. So if you want to help get some of those, we've got some of those on sale. God bless you. Love you. Have a wonderful day. Amen.